everybody. Today, myself, Mona, and my friend Tita, we made a project on the topic the Heron's Fountain. So, let's know something about it. So, the Heron's Fountain is a hydraulic machine invented by the first AD inventor, mathematician, and physicist Heron of Alexandria. Heron studied about the pressure of air and steam and described the first steam engine and also built toys that would spurt water. One of them is known as the Heron's Fountain. The various versions of Heron's Fountain are used today in physics class as a demonstration of principles of hydraulics and limitics. So, how does it work? Well, the Heron's Fountain is a hydraulic machine that demonstrates the principles of hydraulics and limitics. The flow of water from the high gravitational potential energy to the low gravitational potential energy causes a fountain to form due to increasing pressure on the inside of the system. So, let's see how it works. So, first of all, what I have done, I have filled water in this bottle and then I have tilted it so that the water comes in this bottle. So now, let's see, when I have cold water to here, you can see the non-stop fountain has started. So let's see why. So when I pour water in here, the water passes down to the bottom bottle and from the bottom bottle, the air is pushed to the second bottle. And from the second bottle, all the water is pushed up uh, through here. And then, and hence, the fountain forms. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Nirman Exhibition 2020. My name is Nirman and I am from class 8. The theme for this year's Nirman Exhibition is Steam. As you know, the full form of Steam is Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Mathematics. And our topic, UV towel wire and sanitizer is based on technology. We have designed a dry, clean, or very capable towel dryer and sanitizer that not only dries your towel but also disinfects it by killing most of the bacteria that causes allergies and respiratory diseases. The purpose of designing this UV towel dryer and sanitizer is the problem of having a wet towel after a shower has plagued the world for decades. This UV towel dryer has designed to improve fast pace living, reducing energy consumption and saving million gallons of water all over the world. It also provides positive impact on people's health. Thank you. Now my friend Arin will explain you further. Hello everyone. I am Arin Sasana and this is our model, UV rays, towel dryer and sanitizer. The product sanitizes the towel and passes through the machine using the UV rays to do so. It uses miniature turbine to direct hot rays towards the towel and maintain the temperature to allow for easy time. In doing so, it breaks the hydrogen bonds that hold the water molecules to each other, releasing the water in its gaseous state. It uses UV rays to keep the towel junk free and also it consists of temperature consisting function that can keep the towel warmer all the time. The UV light Disinfect the towel and keep them fresh and fluffy. Now my friend, yes. My name is Yash and I am going to explain some principles used in our model. First, dehumidification. Dehumidifiers pull moisture out of the air, put it in a liquid state and remove it from your towel. Second, UV disinfection. The power of UV light is used to sanitize the towel as it passes through our machine. UV light, specifically at 254 nanometer, is scientifically considered bactericidal. 254 nanometer wavelengths of light kill or inactivate microorganisms. UV light is 6 log efficient at 6 inches, which means that it is 99.99% efficient. Now my friend Kalpesh will... My name is Kalpesh and I will continue to explain on UV towel dryer and sanitizer. My first principle on fluid dynamics states that whenever the speed of the liquid increases, the pressure decreases. And whenever the speed of the liquid decreases, the pressure increases. As you all know, evaporation takes a major hand in drying most of the things. And especially so with a thick towel situated in water. We use the heating coils to dry the towel. Whenever we heat the air, the hydrogen molecules that hold the bond with water breaks down, releasing the water. Now my friend, Lonak will continue. Hi, I'm Lonak. Now I am going to tell you the uses of UV towel dry and sanitizer. UV sterilization, also known as UV disinfection, or ultraviolet thermal vector radiation. UV GI works by breaking down certain chemical bonds, scrambling the structure of 
DNA amino causing a microorganism animal to multiply. UPC lactases one of the numerous methods for detection and to stand in this infection. Regiments to continue to cut infection rates for all pathogens, including drug resistant organisms. Formal sterilizations can be used at home, spa, beauty salon, hair salon, hotels, and most of the places. It mainly uses UV rays to keep towels germ-free and also the cabinet has temperature consistency function that can keep the towel warmer and all the time. Thank you for watching our video on UV towel dry and sanitizer. Dear teachers and my dear friends, today we the students of grade 8A, E and F are going to represent our Nirman project on the topic Jantar Mantar Samrat Yantra, also known as Sundial. This is our model and for now more information my friend Sanika will continue. Namaste, the world's largest sundial, Rihat Samrat Yantra, was built by Savai Jaisi. In 1734, Jantar Mantar in Jaipur is an astronomical observatory which is also a world UNESCO heritage site. This is the destination which every tourist must add to their itinerary. Raja Jai Singh too constructed five such observatories in different parts of the country such as uh, Varanasi, Delhi, Ujjain, Jaipur and Mathura. The one in Jaipur is the largest of all the observatories and the one in Mathura is almost in ruins now. Savai Raja Jai Singh II was the potential ruler of Ambal region. My friend Charita will continue with the further information of about Brihat Samrat Yantra. Sundial, the world's largest sundial, has been telling time for about five years. We will continue. Total 20 instruments in Jantar Mantar Jayapu out of which we explain to. Some major instruments are Disha Yantra, Chakra Yantra, Jayaprakash Yantra, Rashi Yantra, Uttansh Yantra and Vindash Yantra. I hope you all liked our project. Living Concrete, a warm welcome to the Al Paribi Sotla along with my friends Pia Bhandari and Vaishnavi Jaff will explain you the concept of Living Concrete, a new kind of concrete developed at the University of Colorado, Florida, is teeming with life. Unlike traditional concrete which is a mix of water, sand and cement, this new material incorporates with two new ingredients which is photosynthesis bacteria and gelatin. The researchers created arches, 2 inch cube and shoebox size bricks of which started out green as a result of the bacteria photosynthesis abilities before fading to brown as the material dries. These materials use the gelatin and nutrition to hold the sand together in a web of material. Now let's talk about the process of making a living concrete. Now I am going to describe the process of making a living concrete. To make a living concrete, first a mixture of sand, cement, water and gelatin is taken along with bacteria and poured in a mold. Then the mixture was kept for freezing. After freezing, the block which we obtained was was, uh, was dehydrated so that the gel like the gel like properties of gelatin can be removed from it. After dehydration, 
A test was taken to make sure that the bacteria was alive. For this, for this, the block is kept under a humid temperature in the presence of light and air. After some time, it was observed that the cracks which were there in the block were filled automatically. It was due, the reason was because the reason was in the presence of light and air, the bacteria was able to feed himself up, was able to feed himself and give and give out a waste product known as calcium carbonate, which is a which is an important compound found in limestone, making it harder. Because even of it was even observed that if we cut the block into two halves, we or a, into two halves we can get two different blocks. So thus, this means that the block or the living concrete is a self is self healing and a replicating block. My friend Vaishnavi, we will co- will continue about the characteristics and its uses of living concrete uses of living concrete first. Minerals in new materials are deposited not by chemistry but by cyanobacteria, a common class of microbes that capture energy through photosynthesis. The photosynthetic process absorbs carbon dioxide in stark contrast to the production of regular concrete which produces huge amount of that greenhouse gases. Second, living concrete is a concrete that absorbs greenhouse gases which and uses it to self heal and reproduce itself, thus creating a sustainable environment. Third, two cubes of living concrete is enough for a whole person to stand on. Fourth, the living concrete is still undergoing changes in its process of making it into a harder substance like the regular ones. Thank you. Good morning everybody. My name is Isik Subedi and the topic for my project is Perpetual Motion. Perpetual Motion is the motion of bodies that continue forever. A perpetual motion machine is a hypothetical machine that can do work infinitely without an energy source. But this kind of machine is impossible as it would violate the first or second law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics is also known as the law of conservation of energy. It states that energy cannot be created nor be destroyed. It can only be transferred from one form to another. The second law of thermodynamics says that the entropy of isolated systems always increases. As you can see here, this is a perpetual motion machine in theory. The water flows up through the straw onto the turbine which rotates and if connected to the armature of a dynamo will produce energy. But it will all only flow for about 2 to 3 minutes and stop as it would violate the first law of thermodynamics. Another example is Boyle's flask. In the 17th century, Robert Boyle came up with the idea of a self-watering pot. He theorized that the capillary action, the attraction between liquids and surfaces, might keep the water cycling through the bowl. But if the capillary action is strong enough to overcome gravity, it would also prevent it from falling back into the bowl. There are also versions with magnets, like with a set of racks. The ball is supposed to be pulled by the magnet at the top, fall back through the hole and repeat its cycle. But this one also, like the self-watering pot, the magnet will simply hold the ball at the top. And even if it somehow did keep moving, the magnet strength would degrade over time and eventually stop working. So in conclusion, perpetual motion machines are never pos- possible and free energy is nothing. Thank you. Kali, Kilo Empire Linear Injector is a direct energy weapon being developed in India by Defense Research and Development Organization DRDO and Baba Atomic Research Center BARC. It is a direct energy weapon 
design in a such a way that if any enemy missile is launched towards India, it will quickly emit its powerful pulses and destroy its target. Kali is a practical accelerator. While other components in the machine down to the line convert energy into electromagnetic radiation, which can also be adjusted as X-rays or microwave frequencies. This project was first founded by Dr. P. H. Ron and then moved in 1985 to the director of BARC, Dr. Chandra. The work on this project started in 1989 by BARC under the guidance of Dr. Chidambara. DRDO was also involved in this project. Initially, Kali was made was being made for the industrial applications, while the defense applications became clearer for the applications of Kali. Kali was put to use by DRDO to many users. The electromagnetic radiation emitted by Kali is used as Bastilis Research Center in Chandigarh for ultra-high photography. Use of Kali as a weapon. Weaponization of Kali will take some time. As still the process is under development and many other components are to be made. Mission Whitewash Whitewash mission took place in 2012. It was a greatest event in the greatest bat battlefield which trapped 140 Pakistani soldiers under deep sea. While uh, some accused India as it wasn't a natural avalanche, but it was an experiment made by India to destroy Pakistani soldiers. So I hope you liked my project. Thank you. Who created hydroelectricity and where? Hydropower became an electricity source in the 19th century, a few decades before the British. American engineer James Francis developed first hydroelectric power plant began in the United States along the Fox River in Appleton, Wisconsin in the 18th century. Hydroelectricity and how it works. So just do, how do we get electricity from water? Actually, hydroelectricity and coal-fired power plants produce electricity in a similar way. In both cases, a power source is used to turn a propeller, like piece called a turbine, which when turns a metallic shaft in the electric generator, which is the motor that produces electricity. Hydroelectricity is a renewable energy source. Hydroelectricity makes it feasible to utilize other renewable energy sources. Hydroelectricity is a fundamental... There are also many disadvantages of hydroelectricity. Some of them are some adverse environment impact. The project construction is very expensive upfront. There is a lack of available with the voice. Future of hydroelectricity. Hydropower has the potential to support more than 195,000 jobs across the nation in 2050. By 2050, hydropower can reduce cumulative greenhouse gas emissions by 5.6 gigatons, equivalent to nearly 1.2 billion driven in a year, saving over $209 billion from avoided global damages from climate change. That's amazing. Largest hydroelectric power plants in the world, the Three Gorges Dam in UB, China, 22,500 megawatts. The Itepu Dam in Brazil or Para, in second place, 14,000 megawatts. Hydroelectric power plants in India, the Tehri Dam, Sardar Sarovar Dam, Baspa 2, Barka Dam. Nathpara Jarki and many more. Do you know the largest hydroelectric power plant in India is the Konya Dam. 
Hyperloop is a conceptual transportation system to a lower cost and travel time relative to the current high speed rail system. Elon Musk and the team of engineers from Tesla and SpaceX proposed this idea in August 2013. This train will transport passengers at the remarkable speed at of 1200 km per hour. It has key features that set it apart from these vacuum tubes and high speed train tracks. The passenger capsules are propelled by air pressure like in vacuum tubes but by electronic magnetic motors similar to ones featured in Tesla cars and rail guns. The tube tracks do have a vacuum but they are not completely free of air. Instead, they have low pressure inside of them. Most things moving through air will end up compressing the air in front so creating a cushion of air uh, that shows the object down but the hyperloop will feature a compressor fan which will redirect the air to the back of the capsule for additional propulsion. Advantages of Hyperloop Hyperloop are faster and cheaper than car or train travel. It's less polluting than air travel. It's also quicker and cheaper than traditional high-speed rail. It can also withstand on earthquake, will be able to reduce traffic congestion. Good morning my respected teachers, my dear friends and all the viewers. Myself Pranjal with my friends Raghav, Vineet and King. Let me and my friends introduce you to one of the most fascinating things ever created by the humans, the Hyperloop. Hyperloop is a possessed mode of passenger and transport. Designed released by a joint team of Tesla and SpaceX. Hyperloop is a sealed tube or system of tube with low air pressure through which a pod may travel free of air resistance or friction. Hyperloop could convey people from airport or hypersonic speed while being very energy efficient. Now my friend Kim will explain you more about Hyperloop. This would drastically reduce travel times versus train as well as planes over distance of under approximately 1500 kilometers. Elon Musk first publicly mentioned the Hyperloop in 2012. His initial concept incorporated reduced pressure tubes in which pressurized capsules ride on air bearings driven by linear induction, motors and axial compressors. The Hyperloop Alpha was first published in 2013 August, proposing and examining a route running from the Los Angeles region to the San Francisco Bay Area, roughly following the Interstate 5 corridor. Now my friend Raghav will tell you more about Hyperloop. Hyperloop Genesis paper conceived of a Hyperloop system that would propel passengers along a 350 mile that is 560 kilometers at a road or 760 miles per hour that is 1200 kilometers per hour allowing for a travel time of 35 minutes which is considerably faster than the current rail or airway travel times. Preliminarily, this estimates for this Los Angeles to San Francisco suggested routes were included in a white paper US $6 billion for a single passenger version only and US $7.1 million for somewhat a larger diameter version transporting passengers and vehicles. Transportation analysts has doubt that the system could be constructed under the budget. Some analysts claim that the Hyperloop would be several billion dollars over budget taking into consideration of construction, development and operation cost. So now my friend Vineet will continue and tell you more about the Hyperloop train. Thank you. The Hyperloop concept has been explicitly open sourced by Musk and SpaceX and others have been encouraged to take the idea and further development. To that end, a few companies have been formed and several interdisciplinary students led terms are working to advance the technology. SpaceX built an ex approximately one mile long subscale track for its port design competition at its headquarters in California. The first hyperloop was conducted by its chief technology officer Josh Jigel and Sara Lucian, director of passenger experience as the first passenger at a speed of 172 km per hour.
Good morning to all teachers and my dear friends. Today I and my group will introduce human cyborg. A cyborg is a portmanteau of a cybernetic organism is a being with both organic and biometric body part. The term was coined in 1960 by Manfred Klein and Nathan Klein. But the cyborg may also be portrayed as looking more like robots or more like ordinary humans. An organism which is partially mechanical and partially biological is called a cyborg. The Star Wars character Darth Vader is a good example for a cyborg. He is the person whose body has been improved from technology. He is mainly but not entirely human. Thank you. Hobbison is a Spanish born British Irish cyborg artist and activist for trans species rights in New York City. He is best known for being recognized as the first person to have an antenna implanted in his skull and is legally recognized by the government as the first cyborg. He has an antenna in his head which picks up vibrations of colors like ultraviolet colors and infrared and can receive telephone calls and satellite images directly in his head. Neil Harbison is one of these people. The artist was born with complete color blindness, far from a disability. Harbison considers his nature a natural worldview as an asset. How does the cyborg work? The cyborg antenna is a sensory system created to extend color perception. It has been implanted and also integrated in Harbison's head and it sprouts from within his occipital bone. It has been permanently attached to Harbison's head since 2004 and it allows him to feel and hear colors as audible vibrations inside his head including colors invisible to the human eye such as infrareds and ultraviolets. The antenna also allows internet connection and therefore the reception of color from other sensors or from satellitism and send audible vibration through his skull. Harbison began developing the antenna at college in 2003. Human Cyborg Harbison has given permission to five friends, one in each continent, to send color, images, video or sound directly into his head. If he receives color by asleep, his friends can color and alter his dreams. The first public demonstration of skull transmitted image was broadcast live on a chat show. The first person to make a phone call directly into his skull was Ruby Wax. The reason Neil Harrison chose to be a cyborg as he smiles disarmingly. It's a new body part, he says pointing at it. When I was studying music in England, I decided to create a new organ for the sense of color because I didn't want to wear technology. I wanted to have an organ that would allow me to sense color. Thank you. A brief computer interface or BCI provides a direct path of communication from the brain to an external device, effectively creating a cyborg. After the patient is unconscious through anesthesia, brain pacemakers or electrodes are implanted into the region of the brain where the cause of the disease is present. Conclusion With this we conclude that the cyborg is both a product of social reality and of fictionalized conception that enhances human capability. In the incarnation, the cyborg becomes a co-heritage. Therefore, it blurs the boundary between reality and fiction. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Rishabh Singh from 8th day and today I am going to present my Nirman Science Exhibition project, Vaccine Development and Production. What is Vaccine Development? Vaccine Development is a long complex process often lasting 10 to 15 years and involving a combination of public and private involvement. The current system of developing, testing and regulating vaccines developed during the 20th century as the groups involved standardized their operation, their regulations and procedures. History of Vaccine Development At the end of 19th century, several vaccines for humans had been developed. However, they were However, no regulation of vaccine production existed. They were the vaccines of smallpox, rabies, plague, cholera, typhoid, and other diseases. On July 1, 1902, the US Congress passed an act to regulate the sale of viruses, serums, toxins, and analogous products, later referred to as the Biologics Controls Law. This act was the first modern 
federal legislation to control the quality of drugs. This act emerged in part as a response to the 1901 contamination events in St. Louis and Canberra involving smallpox vaccine and diphtheria antitoxin. There are several stages of vaccine development and testing. The first stage is the laboratory and animal studies. Explanatory stage. This stage involves the basic laboratory research and often lasts 2 to 4 years. Federally funded academic and government scientists identify natural or synthetic antigens that might help prevent or treat a disease. These antigens could include virus-like particles, weakened viruses or bacteria, weakened bacterial toxins or other substances derived from pathogens. Then there is the preclinical stage in which the vaccine is developed and then there are the phase 1 vaccine trials. And in phase 1 vaccine trials, a few amount of healthy people is tested with the vaccine. And then the phase 2 begins in which hundreds of people are tested and then the phase 3 in which a large amount of people is tested. So, if everything goes right, the vaccine is approved and it is licensed. And in phase 4 trials, the government and the vaccine manufacturers monitor the status of the people who receive the vaccine. In conclusion, vaccines are developed, tested and regulated in a very similar manner to other drugs. In general, vaccines are even more thoroughly tested than non-vaccine drugs because the number of human subjects in vaccine clinical trials is usually greater. In addition, forced licensure monitoring of vaccines is closely examined by the Center for Diseases Control and the FDA. Now let's watch a video regarding this topic. Thank you for watching.
Hello friends, I am Vansh Paliza from 8th B and I am Usha Shikha from 8th A. Today we are here to present you our Nirman project 2020. Today we are making a lava lamp. Lava lamp was invented by Edward Walker in 1963. The lamp when lit on here resembles as if it is a volcano lava flow. For this project, we are using an empty glass bottle, oil, water, food color and a disprint tablet. So let's get started with our project. First we will pour some oil in the glass bottle. The bottle has to be filled more than the half. Now we will pour little amount of water. Now we will pour some amount of food color. Now we will put one tablet of display. Now, see, can, can you see the bubbles coming up from the disprint tablets? This is, this is the concept of the lava lamp. This is used for decorations and uh, general purposes. This red color resembles the lava erupting from the volcano. Today we, the students of 8th grade of Edutanya High School, will be presenting before you a brief description about Neuralink. When you first hear it, Neuralink's person sounds like it comes straight out of a mad genius diary, certainly one that has a new sixth sense, Neuralink. Who found it better, sir? In corporate space, see, oh, Elon Musk in 2016. San Francisco Bay Area Space Learning aims to implant wireless brain computer interfaces with the most complex human organ to help cure neurological conditions like Alzheimer, dementia, and spinal cord injuries, which ultimately fuse humankind and with artificial intelligence. An implantable device can actually solve these problems. Elon Musk said on a webcast Friday, mentioning alignments such as memory loss, hearing loss, depression, and insomnia. Thank you. Neuralink's brain-machine interface technology sends electrodes into the brain, then uses a chip to communicate with computers outside your skull. Tiny electrodes, threads, penetrate the outer surface of the brain, detecting an electrical impulse from the nerve cells that shows the brain is active. With the device surgically implanted, in, into the skull of a pig named Gertrude, Elon Musk demonstrated his startup Neuralink's technology to build a digital link between brains and computers. A wireless link from the Neuralink computing device showed the pig's brain activity as it snuffled around the pen on the stage. Brain computer interfaces like Elon Musk's Neuralink could be had, letting thieves steal thoughts and memories. Experts 1. 
Elon Musk plans to link human brains to computer using tiny implants, but a new report warns the implants could leave us vulnerable to hackers. Scientists prepare human trials of bionic eye which links directly to a chip in the brain and could cure blindness and beat Elon Musk's Neuralink to market. It has been more than 10 years in the making but scientists are preparing to implant a bionic eye in human subject. Neuralink has received $158 million in funding, $100 million of which came off Musk and employs roughly 100 staff members according to the LinkedIn data. Thank you. Let us give you a demonstration. This is a small and imaginary model of Neuralink's As soon, this chip directly connects with your brain. This chip will be placed near your ears like this. Once it is placed, it will connect with your brain and talk. After it gets placed, it will start working on a progress immediately. Thank you. To sum up, I would like to give you a short list about pros and curves of Neuralink. The first tech demonstration of the Neuralink brain chip working involved a machine that can install electrodes into brain matter while avoiding blood vessels. The advantage of such a system is the ability to install thousands of electrodes while preventing bleeding, something that can be catastrophic. very warm welcome to everyone present here. Today we have made a project on the topic colonization of Mars. Organizations have proposed plans for a human mission to Mars but no person has set foot on the planet. However, landers and rovers have successfully explored the planetary surface and delivered information about conditions on the ground. Reason for colonizing Mars the only reason for colonizing Mars include your curiosity, the potential for humans to provide more in-depth observation researches than unmanned rovers, economic interest in its resources, and the possibility that the settlement of other planets will decrease the likelihood of human extinction. Now, my friend Taita will further continue. Difficulties and hazards include radiation exposure during a trip to Mars and on its surface, toxic soil, low gravity, the isolation that accompanies Mars, distance from Earth, a lack of water and cold temperatures. Earth is similar to Venus in bulk composition, size and surface gravity, but Mars' similarities to Earth are more compelling when considering colonization. Now my friend Mahi will continue. Similarities of Mars and Earth the Martian day is very close in duration to Earth. A solar day on Mars is 24 hours and 39 minutes. Mars has an average surface area which is 28.4% of Earth, which is slightly lower than the dry grounds on Earth. Mars has half the radius of Earth and one-tenth the mass of Earth. Mars has a lower density and a smaller volume than Earth. The conditions on Mars are similar to those on Earth in terms of sunlight and temperature as compared to the other planets and moon. Now my friend Peher will continue. Equipment for colonization of Mars Colonization of Mars requires a wide variety of equipment. Both equipment directly provides services to humans and production equipment provides food, water, energy, propellant and breathable oxygen in order to support human colonization Basic requirements will be basic utilities, water, oxygen, local communication, waste disposable, water recycling, habitat, shop storage, storage facility, shop of spaces, airlock for pressure radiation, and dust management. Now, my friend, Molly will continue. There is no shortage of ideas for how human beings might establish a colony on the right planet. They are also quite detailed, ranging from different kinds of structures that could be built, how they would be built, what they would be built from, and how they would be protected from the elements. They again, they should have to be in order to address the many challenges that living in Mars would present. This includes extreme distance from sea, unbreathable atmosphere, extreme temperatures, increased exposure, 
to radiation. Now, my friend, that we will continue. Hence the conclusion is from this many proposal and ideas, a picture of Martian settlement begins to appear. This is in keeping with our growing interest in Mars and ev and evolving plans to explore the planet. And while the challenges may be great, the proposed solutions are both innovative and potentially effective. Whether or not we should colonize Mars, the fact remains that we can give the right commitment and enough resources. And if and when we do, we already have a pretty good idea of what Martian colonies might look like. Thank you. Interest in Mars and ev and evolving plans to explore the planet. And while the challenges may be great. The proposed solutions are both innovative and potentially effective. Whether or not we should colonize Mars, the fact remains that we can give the right commitment and enough resources. And if and when we do, we already have a pretty good idea of what Martian colonies might look like. Thank you. Good morning everyone, my name is Rishti Hibari from 8A and along with me there are my teammates Takshi Jain from 8A and Jasmine from 8B. The theme for Nirmal Exhibition is STEAM which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts and Mathematics. So, for our Nirmal project we have chosen self-driving cars. Yes. Self-driving cars, the future of driving. Self-driving cars are vehicles in which human drivers are never required to take control to safely operate the vehicle. We combine sensors and software to drive, navigate and control the vehicle. Self-driving cars are currently made of many companies like Tesla, Waymo and Arduino. Autonomous cars create and maintain a map of the surroundings based on a variety of sensors situated in different parts of the vehicle. Radar sensors monitor the position of vehicle of nearby vehicles. Video cameras detect the traffic lights, read road signs, track other vehicles and look for pedestrians. Light detection and and the surrounding cars to measure the distances detect road edges and identify lane markings this is a model of a self driving car a self driving car is capable of sensing the environment and navigating without human input to accomplish this task each and every vehicle usually outfitted with a gps unit Inertial navigation system, pairs of sensors, laser rangefinders, radars, and video cameras. To localize itself, the vehicle uses information from GPS and navigation systems, as well as build a three-dimensional image of this environment. Computer glasses that add information alongside or to what the wearer sees. Smart glasses devices may also have features found on a smartphone. As with other life logging and activity tracking devices, the GPS tracking units and digital camera of some smart glasses can be used to record historical data. For example, after the completion of a workout, data can be uploaded into a computer or online to create a log of exercise activities for analysis. They are an attempt to bring the wireless connectivity and imagine we enjoy on our home computers and cell phones into the frames and lenses of our eyes. In reality, it is the technology where digital information is superimposed in natural existing environment. In other words, for example, if there's a technology where you can have a lion, actually digital image of a lion standing next to you in your house. By this technology, digital information in form of text, graphics, virtual enhancements and integrated with real-world objects. During making of the project, we have experienced and demonstrated this technology. Let us watch the video. May I ask you one question? Sure, why not? So my question is, 
what is the name and augmented reality? Hmm. Um. Actually, I don't know. Okay, then I will tell you this. Augmented reality is an interactive experience of a real world environment where the objects that reside in the real world are enhanced by computer-generated perception information. Oh, so this is smart glasses. It's the latest technology in which we can view world images. Actually, augmented reality is used in these smart glasses. These pictures are making me more understand about the topic augmented reality. Wait, Tanisha and Anushka, let me add on. Augmented reality in short form, we can say AR. This technology is also used in many apps like Snapchat, AR Lupa, and nowadays these come in inbuilt in a mobile phone's camera. Now my friend Angel will continue. How will augmented reality affect our future? Augmented reality technology will give us access to just-in-time information anytime, anywhere. This technology will enhance our educational and travel experience using a smart glass. Thank you. Smart glass technology. So let us know something about smart glass technology. How does smart glass work? It actually uses the AR technology to display information in front of user's eye. It displays smartphone notifications and other information in front of user's field of view. Companies like Google and Microsoft have made their versions of smart glasses and made exciting advances in the field of technology. Their dash sensors, this is light detection and ranging technology is also being used by market leaders like Apple and very soon in the coming years, smart glass will replace our smartphones and users. Education. The public will not only need to learn how to operate the new tools literally right before their eyes, but how to adapt and respond to the influx of wireless data, imaging and audio from their suddenly sentient spectacles, vision awareness. Eyeglasses must continue to serve their primary function, which is correct vision. Wearers of smart glasses will need to keep their vision healthy in check as they adapt the underrepresented mixed imagery ahead. Tip. Smart glasses have considerable potential to distract the wearer, which could increase the danger of, to themselves and others. Great Britain banned the use of Google Glass while driving even before hit the streets. Security To enhance the device security, confidentiality is achieved by the encryption of stored and transmitted information. Smart glasses uses Bluetooth to pair with an Android or iOS smartphone. The Bluetooth pairing has been subject of many research studies and possible tips. Fashion Appearance proves a major obstacle for the GT looking Google Glass. Advancements in wireless technology since should allow smart glass of the future to be fashionably slim and stylish. With all the smart glass technology on the horizon, one thing's for certain. Very soon, we will never look at the eyeglasses the same way again. Thank you. Thank you everyone. My name is Krishna and our topic is creating a game with scratch. I want to start explaining you with the importance of games. Games are a fundamental way that humans interact and learn. They provide so many benefits for people of all interests and abilities. Children especially love playing games and these activities provide such a great opportunity for them. You will thinking, what is Scratch? Let me help you through it. Scratch is a visual based programming language that is targeted primarily at children age 8 to 16 to help them learn code. Users of this website can create online projects using block-like interface. This service was created at MIT Media Lab which has been translated into 70 plus uh, languages to, uh, which is spread throughout the world. It is taught in after school centers, schools, colleges and public knowledge institutions. As of 2020, the community statistics of the world's language website shows over 39 million projects shared by over 38 million users with 36 monthly website visits. Now my friend Zayan will take over. You might be interested to know who is the creator of Scratch. His name is Mitchell Resnick. Mitchell Resnick was born 
on June 12, 1956, is Lego. Pepper, Professor of Learning Research, Director of the Okawa Center and Director of the Lifelong Kindergarten Group at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, Media Lab. As of 2019, Resnick serves as Head of the Media Arts and Sciences Academic Program, which program grants Master's degree and PhDs at the MIT Media Lab. Okay, now to the main point. This game is made by us. We use Scratch programming language for this game. Mainly, this game is about a huge space gang who has stolen our spaceship, created by the best scientists on Earth. We need to make our way to the boss by defeating its old gang until he turns up. We need to kill him and destroy our spaceship too as it is very harmful for the universe. We all made this game by our coordination. Now my friend Zayan will tell you more about this project. This project is made by the use of motion codes to move the player ships around its x-axis. Here we have used the clone technique to make the clones of the enemy ship hit the player. Uh, the player upgrade his shooter from single to double, double to triple and triple to multiple shots. Uh, and from collecting the coins which he has eliminated from the ships. Uh, eliminated ships. The, anim uh, the explosion scenes. Uh, the explosion scenes are made possible by using list. Uh, which make a explosion scene right there. Uh, here is a short gist of how the uh, how the game is played. Thank you. Because the air is rapidly pushed out backwards, 
there is a reaction force that pushes the balloon forward. This principle comes from Newton's third law of motion, which states that for every action, there is an equal or opposite reaction. According to the Newton's third law of motion, when air is pushed backwards out the opening of the balloon, there must be an equal or opposite reaction that tends to push the balloon forward, something like this. When you just leave a balloon on its own, it tends to randomly fly around all over the room and is almost impossible to stare. But when you attach it to a car like this, you can harness the balloon's energy to propel the car forward. The engineering goal of this project was to design, build and test a car that is powered by nothing but a balloon. Thank you. cardboard then I just uh, stuck one bottle on it then I have flipped the problem this clothes in POP and I left it overnight and then uh, I took bamboo sticks and fixed it in this cardboard and uh, then I uh, kept this clothes on that bamboo stick and then I painted it now uh, my project is ready then I will do the reaction First, I will put the salt, then baking, uh, baking powder, then the vinegar, and then coat color. Using the marker, label the potato A and B with the help of an adult. Cut two pieces of copper wire using a scissor or a wire cutter. These pieces should be 5 cm long. Open the battery compartment of the clock and remove the battery from insert. Insert a galvanized nail into each potato. Only insert half of the nail. Repeat the previous step of the copper wire and keep it away as possible from each other. Make sure they do not touch each other from inside. Connect the copper wire for Tato A to the positive terminal of clock's battery compartment using the first jumper wire. It is usually labeled by the symbol plus. Connect the second, connect the galvanized nail of, of potato B to the negative terminal of clock's battery compartment using the second jumper wire. This negative terminal is usually labeled by the symbol minus. How to make a potato cake? Did you know that the potatoes are great conductor of electricity? Now you can build a clock with no any batteries but simple regular potatoes. Learn on how to make a simple clock with just a regular potato. Materials required. In order to power a potato, you will need the following materials. Two large potatoes, a marker pen, a pair of scissors or wires, Two galvanized nails, copper wire, three jumper wires with alligator clips, a digital LED clock that uses one AAA battery or one AA battery. Now you can find easily galvanized nail, copper wire, jumper wire at all hardware shops. Connect the galvanized nail of potato A to the copper wire of potato B using the third jumper wire. Now if you look at the screen of the clock, you will notice that the clock has turned on. So what did we learn here? In this project, the potato creates an electrochemical cell which converts chemical energy into electrical energy. The galvanized nail is coated in zinc 
an element which chemically reacts with the copper in the wire. This reaction is known as electron transfer. So the potatoes both conduct electricity and keep copper and zinc apart from each other, allowing an electric circuit to be created. The movement of electrons generate electrical power for the clock. Extract your own DNA. DNA is like a computer program, but far, far more advanced than any software ever created. I am Ayushi Kushwaha. Along with me, my group members are Avantika Saxena, Riya Amin, Divyanka Mishra, and Trisha Gada. a saline solution in a beaker. Pour 25 ml of distilled water in the beaker. Now add 2 lap scoops of salt. Stir until the salt is completely dissolved to the paper cup. Without swallowing, drink a mouthful of the solution from the paper cup and squish it back. It's best to do this with a clean mouth. Fit your mouth to a solution back into the cup. Then, bend the cup into a sort of spout and pour the mouth to a solution into the test tube until it fills about one half inch of the bottom of the test tube. Carefully add two drops of the liquid soap. Tilting the test tube approximately 45 degrees, use the dropper to add 20 drops of the chilled isopropyl so it slides down the test tube without disturbing the solution. Since it's less dense, the isopropyl will sit atop the mouthwash and soap solution. Now, tightly put the cap on the test tube. And very slowly and gently tilt it upside down then right side up three times. Do it carefully so as not to make bubbles. At this point, you should begin to see a milky white thread possibly interspersed with bubbles, appear between the solution and the isopropyl. That's your DNA. If you wish, insert your stir rod into the test tube and gently wind the DNA around it. Let us deduce our project. When we swish the salt water around in our mouth and scrap our teeth along the inside of our cheek, we were also collecting cheek cells. The salt helped them clump together. The decreasing agents in the soap work to break down the cell membrane to release the DNA which is housed inside the cell's nucleus. Gently mixing the soap and mouthwash solution ensured you didn't break up the DNA clumps too much. The strands of clump together DNA would have eventually dissolved in the salt water but since it's not soluble in isopropyl, it precipitates out where the liquid layers meet. 